Hello and welcome back to the Spellcorp Industrial Complex where today I want to do some fun little stuff with mob farming and XP and enchanting and try to get some cool stuff going. We're here, we're here in our server room where last time we kind of got everything hooked back up. We got our little desk going here with our supercomputer, this amazing ME controller. Well, today, today we're going to be using AI for mob farms hopefully 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 that's what we're going to be doing there's this mod here called hostile neural networks under the resources tab and i want to see if we can use this to make some cool mob farms because it sounds like that's what you can do like for example hostile neural networks is a mod based around simulating mob kills for loot what better way to lean into the whole supercomputer side of things by using a neural network to simulate mob kills that's great that's great but I also want to get some enchanting stuff going because, I don't know, I just kind of want, I feel like Minecraft with enchantments is just so much fun. Look at this. We got our Mending Silk Touch pickaxe. This is kind of actually a bad pickaxe in this mod. There's so much more we can get, and I want to play around with mob spawners. And if we look at mob spawners, actually, in here, uh, what are, not mob spawner, just, uh, just spawner. If we look at just spawners. The spawner, it says it's from Apotheosis or whatever, right? But you can actually just pick up spawners with Silk Touch and can modify them. So if we pick up a spawner, we can put all sorts of different things on it to uh, to make the spawner go. A Nether Star makes it ignore players, so you don't need a nearby player. We can have it ignore light levels. You can increase a bunch of entities up to 16. 16 fermented spider eyes. So you can kind of just use this all to buff mob spawners, which is kind of fantastic. With these spawners, the only way to actually change what spawns in them is by using a spawn egg. So normally, normally these are just something you can only get in vanilla. So squid spawn egg, for example. You can actually get these in the mod pack if you have the capturing enchantment. The 0.4% chance per level. Um, and the capturing enchantment, well, I mean, we need to get this somehow, right? We need to get capturing. So I'd like to do some enchanting to try to get this so we can get spawn eggs. So we can start making different mob spawning farms. And I mean, there are some other options too that maybe we'll play around with. I know Industrial Foregoing has, what is it here? This mob duplicator, which lets you actually use these mob imprisonment tools to just duplicate mobs, which is very powerful. And uh, I mean, extremely, extremely useful. We did something very similar in Vault Hunters where you just put in the egg and it spawns stuff. It, it works almost, almost the same. Um, we're able to automate changing out the item and, and whatnot, but this requires a little bit more setup because the mob duplicator requires liquid essence and you get essence from a mob farm. So it actually makes sense if we maybe use an apotheosis spawner to spawn in a ton of mobs set up to get going really fast and then have a, what is it here, a mob crusher, crush up the mobs to get the essence that we need and the XP to pump into a mob duplicator to duplicate specific mobs that we that we want. So lots of stuff to do, but I'm thinking that's what this whole floor is kind of going to be about. We're going to use it for all sorts of cool mob spawning stuff. And we got some room down here as well when I tear down all these botany pots. Maybe that's where all the, the simulation stuff is going to go. But lots to do today. And where to get started? Where to get started? Well, first things first, we're going to need one of these mob crushers, which requires an advanced machine frame, which requires more pink slime. So we're going to have to go grind up some more of this stuff, if I can even remember how to get it. What was it, the mob slaughter factory? Yeah, crush up some pigs maybe. But first, I'd like to get a spawner, an apotheosis spawner. So i got to go around the world and hunt for a spawner, and then maybe we can use that to start grinding in the mob thing and hopefully getting some liquid essence and, and whatnot. So, And I have a bunch of broken spawners. But these seem to work differently. Looks like you can use a soul engulfer, soul fire, and soul steel to make a soul cage, which does something. Spawns nine mobs per cycle. I'm not even sure. An average tier, you have to give it souls. I don't know. I don't want to play around with that one. I want to play around with other stuff. Before I run out and grab some spawners, we're actually going to start this hostile neural... Hostile Neural Networks. That's how you say it. This Hostile Neural Networks branch of quests to see if there's anything we should grab before we go. Because the way I understand it is you have to kind of collect the souls or machine learning data 
and you have to kill mobs to do that. So I'd like to maybe get some of the items ready so that when we do run into things, we can kill them as we see them. Because I do, like, for example, ender pearls. I'm going to want a lot of ender pearls, so I'd like to have some training data for ender pearls, maybe. And so maybe we'll have to kill some endermen. But first things first, the deep learner is one of the core components of hostile neural networks. With this item, you can open up a HUD and store data models to gather data while killing mobs. Each learner can hold four data models. And as long as you have the learner anywhere in your inventory, it will collect data for the models placed inside. And you could have multiple in your inventory. Cool. So we're going to need a couple of these maybe. Maybe just one for now. And modeling mobs, you'll need model frameworks to get started collecting data on a mob. You have to right click the mob that you want to gather data on. And then you put it into your deep learner. So we're going to make a couple of these as well. And everything looks quite simple to make. So deep learner... Just need some repeaters. Make, let's make two of these. Why not? You know what? Three. We need model frameworks, which require clay. Which I don't have clay, apparently. Do I have any clay? We have a little bit. There we are. We have 10 of these model frameworks and three deep learners. So we should be able to fit all four in here. Your models will be trained. In order to train, you must deliver the killing blow. Okay. I mean, let's go find some stuff. Let's go look for some spawners. First things first, maybe we go find a blaze spawner in the nether. And maybe we also train some blaze data. That sounds like a, a pretty good idea. Okay. Let's get our model framework ready because I think we're going to want to try a blaze. Oh, rest in peace, blaze. Sir Cassie is killing you. We're going to want to try a blaze, but we're also going to want to grab one of you. Constructed a wither skeleton data model and a blaze data model. Okay. Let's get some more safe and check these out for a second. They show up as cute little things in my inventory. Oh, I'm dying. Okay. Can I place them? No, they're cute. Data collected zero to six. Data per kill one. 0 to 6. Simulation cost 768 FE per tick. Okay, so they cost a lot. But let's go in our deep learner. Please insert a data model. So we can put our wither skeleton. Hunted for their skulls. Upgrades to basic in 6 kills. Model accuracy 1%. Blaze. Okay. Very cool. Okay, so we got a couple things in our deep learner. So now, when we kill them, we get extra stuff added to that. Maybe we grab a magma slime while we're here too. You know, might as well just grab kind of everything. Okay, let's grab that. Put it in. Let's try killing it. And I wonder if for, for a magma slime, I wonder if the babies will count towards it too. I think I actually have something too that I should keep on me. The salamander's eye. I think that keeps the blazes away from me if we hold that. We'll be safe. Let's kill all of these and then check out our data model. Oh, and just like that, we're already at a basic tier. Data collected 44 to 48. You get four data per kill. So you get a bit more for these. Upgrades to advanced in one kill. Cool. So maybe, maybe I just run around killing things. See what we can upgrade and also look for some spawners while we're at it. Oh, here's a blaze spawner. But I think before we destroy it, we're going to farm a few blazes off it to level up our uh, our little neural network thing. What are these magmatic bees? And they're pouring lava everywhere. Cool. So we're up to advanced now on our blazes. And hopefully that's good for us. But we're going to use Silk Touch. We got the blaze spawner. Apothic spawners. Cool. And it picks it up as a blaze spawner. So it keeps that. Now, I did have an idea while I was here, and I remembered that that little dungeon by our base had tons of different spawners. Like, it had wither skeleton spawners, creeper spawners, kind of all sorts of fun things like that. So, I'm thinking we're going to go in there and see what kind of cool spawners we can find. And, I mean, back when I used to handle it, it was a little bit scary, but now, that'll be easy. We'll be able to crush things in there. And before I go back out looking for more spawners, I guess we can uh, go a little deeper into this hostile neural networks and kind of see what it's going to give us here. First thing, um, you need to level up. You need it to at least basic, which we have. 
Now we want to simulate death. So we need the simulation chamber and some prediction matrixes. So let's see if we can make these. We have everything for this except for ender pearls. Yay. So I can't make it yet. I can't make it yet. Okay, we're going into the we're going into the cave. We're just gonna work on stuff there. We're actually gonna go check out this dungeon that I found a while ago in the desert because it'll have a ton of fresh spawners for us and I haven't been through destroying all of them yet. Now you guys wanna see a, a neat little trick that I've uh, I've learned about? Look at this. We take this storage scanner from RF tools and crank the radius all the way up. It shows us all the inventories in the area. And I'm realizing now that this isn't going to work because these chests are instanced. Huh. Yeah, because... Yeah, because these are per player um, to, to preserve multiplayer ability of looting. They're not going to show up in here. So this whole idea I had planned isn't going to work anyways. But there is an enchantment table if we want to find that somewhere, wherever it may be. Well, that's not useful. Lots of spawners from that little adventure, and it was pretty quick. I just ran through and mined a ton of them out. So we got a lot of zombie spawners here, some skeleton, a couple spider, a few creepers, a blaze, silverfish, cave spider, husk, wither skeleton, enderman, a bunch of strays. And the neat thing about these apotheosis spawners is in the wild, they all have different things already on them so if this one has a spawn count of three this one has a spawn count of two but the spawn delay the min and max spawn delays are different between them so it's actually going to be kind of important if we want to use one of these for a farm we can just pick one that already has really good rates and then add on to that one and that saves us a little bit of uh of effort on it right so looks like the spawn range and the max entities are all the same on all of them but the activation range changes a little bit and the spawn delays change. This one's pretty good zombie spawner, a low spawn amount, and spawns up to three. It's uh, very nice, but lots for us to play with there, so we can put different things into those spawners. But now I think we can actually take one of these, hook it up to a grinder from Industrial Foregoing, the Mob Crusher, and get some XP flowing into a barrel. And then I think as well I have... I got a bunch of loot from that dungeon that I was grabbing. I think I have enough ender pearls to make our simulation chamber so we can play with that too. Yeah, look at that. Okay, awesome. Let's see how this bad boy works. I am imagining it's going to have to go right to our power line. Please insert a data model to begin the simulation. What do we want to play with? Um, I have a few different ones here. Basic skeleton spider zombie. Basic guardian. Basic Wither Skeleton, Advanced Blaze, Superior Magma Cube. Let's uh, let's try the Advanced Blaze model, maybe. How about that, huh? So we'll take our Blaze model, put it in the top left. Missing Prediction Matrix. So we put a Prediction Matrix in, and it runs. 23% model accuracy. Interesting. Simulation progressed. Paused. System energy level is critical. There's not enough power. Because I seem to... Did I take the power from this again? I did. I did take the power from here again. Okay. Whoops. I keep taking the power. I need more of these flux points, and I can't really make more because they require eye of enders. So I need ender pearls. So that's part of why we're working on stuff like this. Let's just test it here. Throw a simulation computer down. Run our model. We lost our prediction matrix when I broke it. Whoops. Assessing threat level, engaging enemy, sequence prediction, failed processing results. Cannot begin simulation, missing input prediction matrix. Okay, so it gives us a generalized nether prediction, which we can then use to craft different things. If we throw in a bunch of prediction matrixes, gonna keep running and eventually it'll give us something maybe processing results so it seems like when it fails it just gives us the generalized nether predictions but if it passes it'll probably give us a blaze prediction oh here we are prediction succeeded processing results blaze prediction okay so what does this do we need the blaze prediction plus generalized nether predictions to make molten cores or in a loot fabricator, we can make six 
15 blaze rods. Okay, let's make one of these loot fabricators. So if we take a loot fabricator and we put our blaze prediction in here and choose blaze rod, make 16 of them. Oh my goodness, just like that. And this is slowly going. It's still failing. So I think, I guess as you get better, it'll make more. But we need a way... Hmm. The hard part about this is it does use up prediction matrices. Okay, well, I mean, this is pretty cool. So it's just going to run through these prediction matrices, hopefully getting us some more blaze stuff. And then and then from that, we can, uh, we can get some more materials. Neat. I mean, this does take a lot of work, clearly, and we'd have to use some prediction matrices and find a way to make these. But this could be a potential way of doing some mob farming. Very, very cool. Look at this thing go. It's gotten us seven blaze predictions and a few more of these generalized nether ones. Not bad, not bad. 33 iterations gone through. Launching runtime, iteration number 34. Cool. It's very fun to watch. It's very, very fun to watch that just keep going. But we're going to get a bunch of blaze rods from this. Sweet. We're going to test using one of these Apothea spawners and maybe build a little spawning room in here. And see if maybe the zombies can give us pink meat, because that would be very, very nice if they could. We'll build a little chamber here, and then maybe hook up our mob slaughter factory, if it works. Okay, now we throw down our little mob slaughter factory. And we're going to put one of these here, and place our zombie spawner down. Seal it back in. We'll see if it does anything. Doesn't really seem to be spawning anything at all. Maybe we have to be closer to it. Minimum spawn delay 180, maximum spawn delay 240. Activation range 12. Like it's lit up, so we're in range. Why isn't it spawning anything? Is it too bright in here? Yeah, it's too bright. Apparently the tinted glass isn't actually doing anything. I thought tinted glass is supposed to make the area dark. The block light here is still 11. Nothing spawning. Maybe if we fully close it in, it'll work. No, it's still getting uh, still getting a good amount of light in here. Block light. Still light of 13. Hmm. Well, that's very strange. Maybe we just throw a soul lantern on here and have it ignore light levels. That might do it. Okay, we'll try that. Oh, that seems to have worked immediately. Okay, what do we get? Just a few tweaks. Use a spawner modifier to change the stats. Make your spawner work in any light level. Cool. But now it's not killing the zombies because this has no power and it needs a bigger range in front of it. Come on. Stay in there. Stay in it. Stay in it. Oh. Oh, you barely get any pink slime from them. We do have a cave spider egg, a spider egg, a creeper egg, and a regular slime if we want to change it to a slime. I don't know if a green slime is going to give us any pink slime, though. I do have to make one of these range add-ons, though, but we need latex. And I think we keep all of that back at the warehouse. A tier 4 range add-on, we can give that a try and see if it'll be the right range. Throw it in there. It looks like it's going to be. It's sucking up all the zombies. Some liquid meat. Very little pink slime, though. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to try a few different mob spawners and see if we can find one that gives us a good amount of pink slime. I mean, obviously pigs in that do, but I don't, I don't have a good way of spawning those right now. So uh, I'm going to do some searching. Maybe even uh, zombie pigmen, actually, or piglins. Those might be good, but I don't think I have spawners for those. Well, on the hunt I go. Would you look at that? A couple zombified piglin spawners and a magma cube. We can give both these a try and see if uh, see if we get anything useful from them. And uh, oh, okay, cool. This is good. The uh, it it shows that it ignores light, so those upgrades stay on the spawner. I don't know if I. Once I've upgraded it, if I have to break it with Silk Touch, that might be something worth trying. Or maybe once we've picked it up once, we can uh, we can always pick it up. I'm not sure. Let's even just test it with some random... Let's find a, uh, a bad spawner. 
let's just say this zombie spawner. An apothesis zombie spawner. Can I pick it up with break pickup? It breaks. Okay, so he, you always have to use silk touch. Okay, got to be careful with it then. Let's try out one of these zombified piglins. Add the ignores light modifier and throw that up. Let's see if maybe these give us a good amount of pink slime. I'm hoping. I'm hoping they do. Uh, maybe a little bit. I don't. I don't know how much they give. These spawners are really slow. These zombie piglin ones. How can we speed them up? Adding clocks lowers the spawn delay. And sugar. Okay, let's try these different upgrades and see if uh, see if it goes a bit faster. Um, this. You can just add a bunch, lower it right down. Oh, hello. And they're dying. Okay. What about minimum spawn delay? How far can we lower that to? 20. I am the fast. Decrease the minimum spawn delay of a spawner to 20. Oh, and we can add even more clocks, I guess. I, I read it as you could only use 20, but I think you can take it all the way down to 20 is what that means. So if I grab a whole bunch of clocks, we can make it even faster. Oh, where did this guy... What is that? This guy's broken. Let's get this really low and see what happens with it. Time warp spawner. Decrease the maximum spawn delay of the spawner to 20. So that should be, like, super fast now, right? They... Nothing's even rendering correctly, but they're spawning so fast. Okay. Cool. And then... The other upgrades we can do plus one spawn count. We can add fermented spider eyes if we want to buff it even more. So let's add a bunch of fermented spider eyes. Max it out. Raise the spawn count of a spawner to 16. So that's maxed. And then I think we can upgrade it as well with gas tiers, right? To make max entities go up. Not go above 32. Let's try that as well. Buff it a bunch. Oh, and it's going to spawn a ton of them. Okay, we got up to 28. I wish I could see them properly, but they are not rendering right. If we stand here. Oh, it's the working area. The working area is breaking it. Um, okay. Well, this doesn't work fast enough now. <laughs> so we have to speed this up now. But this is making so many. And like if we have a, a mob grinder to kill these, oh, we're going to get so much XP and stuff from this. This is perfect. And I think we have enough pink slime now that we can start making more of those advanced circuit things that I wanted. There we go. With the speed, efficiency, and processing add-ons, this thing is zooming. And it's tearing through them now. It, it actually still can't keep up with the spawner. The spawner is just making too many. But this is awesome. We're getting tons of pink meat going in here. And I made a bunch of simple machine frames so we can go and upgrade these into advanced machine frames just so we have a few extra laying around because I think these are used for quite a few different things we're going to want to make, especially regarding the enchanting and things in this mod as well. All right, we got the advanced machine frames. Now we can try out the mob crusher. Boom, mob crusher, which is going to get us XP from farming things and Mob duplicator. Do I not actually have nether wart? Oh, but we can make some. Thank goodness for that generalized nether prediction. That's saving my butt right now. Cool. And a mob duplicator. Okay, let's uh, let's play with some of this stuff. Okay, here's how we're going to try this first. We're going to hook this up right here and put our mob crusher. And it's going to do nothing because it has no power. But we're going to actually run the same power line through deal from it and for the moment I'm gonna put a lever on that so we can turn it off now it's set to run when there's no redstone signal so that turns it off let's steal your upgrades actually for a minute because I'm gonna need them and put add-on here range add-on and then a bunch of these and it starts going really fast and we're getting a ton of essence already holy smokes okay this is too quick actually we're gonna have to start throwing stuff out same thing, um, run when there's no redstone signal. We already have 32,000 fluid filled up. That's crazy. It's full. It's full, just like that. We got some gold nuggets. Yeah, we're going to have to find a way to 
process all this stuff like the golden swords and things maybe we just throw into a trash can we could recycle them like I think we could throw them into a salvager but the salvager is so slow it's probably it's probably better for us to just toss this stuff right in a trash can but that's awesome now I think we need this essence to make more stuff right because this essence is what we can use to actually enchant with it's basically just liquid XP but I think we can make like an enchantment factory or something and pump it into there. Should we just try it? Let's, let's maybe make one of these and just see what happens if we pull some essence into it. Okay, so we have our enchantment factory. Let's just plug it in and then I guess run some fluid into it, right? That's gonna pull essence out and into here. And then if we can find I don't know, something to try enchanting. Will this work? Like, let's put this diamond sword in. I don't know how much essence it needs. It probably needs 30,000, right? Let's maybe turn that on for a second. It gets killing stuff again. It's gonna be so loud. Oh, boy, is that ever loud. Okay, let's just see what happens, though. 30,000 or 32,000, maybe it'll go. 30,000, it goes. And start, it threw an enchant on it. Sharpness five. Life stealing three. Okay, just like that, we got more. I mean, let's let's just let's try a couple other things. Another diamond sword. Bane of Villagers five knockback two. Okay, so we can get some cool stuff out of this. Amazing. Turn this off because it's horribly noisy. Now what we're actually able to do as well is we can take this mob duplicator and we can put it in a box like this and pump essence into it, because it needs essence to spawn things. But if we run some essence over to our mob duplicator and hook a little bit of power up as well, watch what we're gonna be able to do. Let's see, do I have someone kinda cool, maybe a tortoise? If we throw a tortoise in, when this hits the bottom, it's gonna spawn in tortoises. It's gonna keep spawning in tortoises. If we give it a range add-on, maybe it can spawn them a little wider. It's just gonna keep spawning tortoises as long as we can give it the essence. Oh, that is amazing. That is so cool. So these mob duplicators, super good. Super, super powerful. We can just use so much. And then if we just need more essence, we can run a farm like this. But you can also use the same crusher to feed a duplicator. And usually it can give you enough essence to keep it going if you pick the right things. So I'm guessing the essence used depends on what you're trying to spawn. But I mean, same thing, like we could use, I don't know, what do we wanna try? I got I got iron golems in here. Those sound fun, hey? Will it work? Um, Maybe I can't spawn iron golems. Iron golem doesn't seem to work. What about basals? Oh yeah, that works. <laughs> Hello. Let's try out our new sharpness five sword on one. Very nice. Oh boy, oh boy. Look at this little fancy setup we got here, all right? Let me give you the full tour, okay? What's going on, you might be asking yourself, and I didn't even finish setting it up, but right here on the left, we have our mob crusher. Cutting up some zombie pigmen, getting essence, getting some loot. Loot we can figure out later. I don't care about that right now. I really care about the XP, so we're pumping all the XP into this big advanced black hole tank, okay? And we have like 500 buckets of essence in here, a crazy amount. There's a ton, look at that right there. 512 buckets, so much. But we're then running that line this way, we're running that line this way. We're pulling from this mob crusher so that when we're duplicating mobs, the mobs that get killed, we get their loot, but we also get the essence that gets pumped back into the system. And then we're gonna run the essence from here also back into the duplicator so that we can pull from this source. So we kind of have, we have one source here pumping essence in, but we also have it recycling from this one. So that's pretty good. That turtle's stuck in the wall, poor guy. And then along here, we have some different enchanting tools, right? We have an enchantment factory, which as we saw, gives pretty crazy enchantments to things when you throw them in. Like, uh, I don't really have anything I want to enchant just yet, but that's okay. We also have an enchantment in extractor, which I haven't tried yet. We can transform stuff into essence or you can transform it into books. So I think if we just grab books, it'll pull the uh, enchants off of 
our tool. And this might be a really cool thing to try. So if we, for example, take, I don't want to use our good sharpness five sword, but we'll take this one. Let's throw our Bane of Villagers one in here and put these books in. What's it going to do? Is it going to pull knock back two and Bane of Villagers off of the sword? That is amazing. Okay, great. And then we have an enchantment applicator, which lets you apply that enchantment to things, I believe. So we can put knock back two on our sword and it puts knock back two on our sword. Can you combine things that way? I think you can, but I think it's easier if I, maybe I want to put knock back two on this sword, right? So I take my knock back two book. I put my sharpness five sword in. I put knock back two in. And now we get knocked back to, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Can I add Bane of Villagers as well? <laughs> Might as well. Look at that. We get all these different things put on it. That is so cool. So, I mean, that's basically, that's a huge part of what we wanted to do today. We got a ton of enchanted stuff going. I want to try a book though, just as a quick gamble and see what we get. Knock back two. Whoa, a lot of stuff. Fire aspect, quick draw, magic protection, all sorts of crazy stuff. So we can get super, super cool enchantments from this. This is a fantastic way of doing things. And I have some Enderman Sims running right here so that we're still using a little bit of AI to try to get some stuff. It's kind of bad right now. The model accuracy has actually gone up a little bit, and it looks like it goes up even as you just run the simulations, which is kind of sweet. But uh, maybe I'll throw that Enderman spawner down and kill some Enderman to to get this a little better so that I can get more ender pearls out of it. But I mean, once we have the mob duplicator and the crushers going, we won't even need it anyways. Unfortunately though, that's gonna be all I have time for today. So thanks for coming out and joining me at the Spellcorp Industrial Complex where we got some fancy, fancy enchanting stuff and some mob killing stuff set up today. I think next time I'm gonna do a little bit more work on the tower. Maybe in between episodes I'll get a little bit done. Maybe this room will be closed off. One can only hope. I'm um, assuming I put in the work for it, but we'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye.